Er ist extra aus Paris angereist, um uns aufzuklären, ob die Informations- und Kommunikationstechnik, abgekürzt auch IKT, IKT, die Welt retten wird. Er wird den Vortrag auf Englisch halten, deshalb weist er jetzt auch auf Englisch. Welcome on stage with a big round of applause from Paris, Amael Barouet. Okay. okay, you can hear me nice. I actually like the title of this, this conference, which is try to, to push us to reflect. Um, I have a first question for you, which is related to this image. Does anyone has any clue on what's the big ball in the center of this image? No clue? Some guess? This is, this is actually a synthetic image, this is not a photography. And what you have is a mine, actually a copper mine. And inside, it's the amount of copper that have been extracted from the full hole that you can see. So this is just to show how copper, which is one of the elements we use for all this uh, digital technology, is far from being virtual. We actually need huge mine to extract ex extremely huge amounts of metals, minerals, that we will use then in those machines, those uh, digital products. So I will focus mostly on the environmental footprint of ICT. So what are the environmental impacts that we have behind uh, digital products and technologies? There are many of them. First of all is energy consumption. And the second one I just discussed is the amount of resources that you consume. So it can be metals, can be mineral, minerals, those rare earth elements. There is also the greenhouse gas emission, for sure, related to energy. And um, we have also in electronic, one specific topic with electronic waste, which are mostly illegally exported in Africa and causes a lot of trouble in air, water, and soil pollution. And just to set the context, um, this is the planetary boundaries. So I hope you're ever learn about it, just for those that would not know it, um, it's kind of so since about 10 years, now a bit of more than 10 years, the Stockholm Resilience Center has fixed nine planetary boundaries, as the, nine, the name suggests, nine limits that the humankind should not uh, cross. This was the situation in 2029, and oh, 2009, so it was three boundary cross in times goes by, we went to four, and with the last update this year, now we have six boundary cross. So again, uh, ICT is contributing highly to those different boundaries that are related to uh, biodiversity, climate change, uh, use of water, for instance, and this is why it is important on ICT also to look at the environmental footprint. To make this look and understand how is the footprint structure, we have mainly two methodologies. The first one that you have already known or learned about, which is the greenhouse gases protocol. It's all this like kilograms of CO2 that you hear all around the whole around. They're made for states and countries mainly. So this is something that is used for states, for countries, that is used for companies. And there is a second methodology that I, I actually prefer, which is life cycle assessment, which is my work. Um, and it is more comprehensive because we will have more than one criteria. Instead of being only focused on the carbon footprint, we will include all the other planetary boundaries, the topic of metals, minerals, of water, that are very, very important in ICT and, and digital technologies. Those two leads to two different uh, results. And in the case of ICT, I just want to convince you how most how important it is to look for life cycle assessment and not only carbon footprint. If you look for a data center or any corporation, you should end up with something like this. So first graph, pie chart, uh, the carbon footprint. If you look at it, you understand that the data center has a huge part of the impact, so you need to reduce your energy consumption. Well, if you look at the complete footprint with the life cycle assessment, you will understand that a Okay, there is the greenhouse gases emission, yes. There is also the water consumption. There is also the rare earth elements, so those minerals and metals. 
and the picture starts to be a bit more complicated. So it's not only that I must reduce the electricity consumption of my servers, I also need to look at a lot of other stuff which end up in a bit more complicated result uh, and probably more uh, refined in my opinion. So in one way, if you look only at carbon footprint in the case of ICT, you just, just look to a small, small part of the problem and you might end up going in the wrong direction. Actually completely the wrong direction, losing effort and time, while we actually need to reduce the footprint of IT as all other sectors, IT contribute to reduce the, the impact and we should also look at its own impact. And for this, we definitely need to have life cycle assessments, which are global way and more comprehensive ways um, to do it. So this was just a quick introduction on, on this kind of all impacts. And now I will introduce myself because I didn't do it at the, the very beginning. My name is Amael, I'm based in Lausanne, I'm working in a startup whose name in Re is Resilio out of EPFL. We actually have like two main activities, services and products, and we make data and tools to assess the environmental footprint of IT. So our goal is that ICT can contribute to save the world, and to do so, we actually need to reduce the footprint on, of IT, and we need to reduce it very, very uh, quickly. We have, as I mentioned, I will be very quick on it. Um, we have three lines of activity. We have trainings, we have a software that makes those analyses, and we have a bit of consulting. We work mainly with large organizations that can be private and public, both in Switzerland and international. Uh, for a little anecdote, we started from EPFL, and this is how the, the, the company started, going then to the Canton de Vaux and going then uh, international. And now we work for the European Union, for instance. So I will come back to my, to my subject, which is, will ICT save the world? And for me, we definitely need to understand that we have great potential to e avoid emissions of CO2. We have great potentials that we all know to reduce the footprint and we have a huge footprint for ICT itself. And we need to combine both, because, because the target is here, the target is the Paris Agreement. We need to emit like two tons of CO2 per inhabitant per year. And currently, for a common Swiss person, we are more at 16 than two. So we need actually to cut it by eight. This will not be done alone and we'll need to include, to include um, ICT in it. The, the trick is that we've all learned from 10 years some uh, nice bullshit from Microsoft, which is actually well um, uh, summarized here. In, in around 2010, they actually pushed a lot of marketing saying that the, um, IT is on the cloud, IT is so virtual, it has no footprint, it is the only way to reduce the footprint, and we end up with uh, this nice piece of information that, that a lot of people actually remind, but it's completely false and has no ground, that investing one kilograms of CO2 in IT, we will save 10 elsewhere. So that, this, we've not, not seen it anywhere since 10 years, so now we can actually think and, and understand that it's, it's false. And we need to understand the footprint of IT to get the best on how IT will support us uh, to reduce our footprint. A bit of numbers, because I, I started with this image just to, to show you, to get a, a visual understanding on how far um, we go with all those extraction, all those materials. I just wanted to give you a bit of numbers. Those are numbers from 2019, so they're not the most updated one, but they, they were conducted at world scale, and I think they're very interesting. We got, at this moment, 34 billions of equipment. So equipment here, tablets, smartphones, servers, um, all kind of IT equipment we may have. For about 4 billion users, one human over two, and this ends that we got about eight devices per human being. So for each human here, we got a, actually eight devices. And being all of you, I think you all have at least your laptop plus your phone, maybe a watch connected 
uh, that you have here in this room. If we had the servers you use, the televisions, uh, we will quickly reach the eight, and as we reach Switzerland, we will go way above the eight, probably around uh, 15. And this is a point, and this is a problem, because building those nice pieces of IT is far from a clean process, very far from a clean process. It is international, and it got impacts at all the part of the life, life cycle stage. The first one, the most impressive one, is the manufacturing. In the moment where we, we put those ships together, uh, created them out of silicon, and, and, and create and put them in a product, then we have a bit of distribution transport that actually cause um, CO2. And the final one, which is um, very interesting, is when we export, and because we almost no there is almost no recycling um, in IT, when we export, and actually a lot of it is burned illegally in Africa. Because we have a problem here in Europe, we have no solution to recycle. So uh, mostly we get, it, get the waste out of Europe by more or less uh, legal, um, legal ways. And it ends up somewhere that no one cares and we don't know neither what happened there. So we have those three kind of, of um, impacts that are very different, happen all around the world. And we must keep them in mind uh, when we look for what I call the digital footprint. So the sum of impact we have all around uh, the life cycle stage, the manufacturing, we need to build it, the electricity consumption, we need to feed with electricity those materials. In the end of flights, we actually don't know exactly what happened, but it, we know that it is bad and dirty. Just to give you kind of an idea on how it is spread across um, for a device in Switzerland, so a device can be your phone or whatever laptop, 80% um, of the impact will be on the manufacturing. And out of the manufacturing, the most, in, in most dirty one is the extraction of those metal, the copper I've shown, uh, copper, gold, gold, and all rare, rare earth elements are very demanding to extract. The usage is actually only 15% for Switzerland. Because Switzerland, like France or other European countries, has a nice electricity mix. So we consume clean energy. We have, we have a lot of dams. Uh, the rest is nuclear, so not so much um, carbon emission when we consume electricity. It ends up that the main message is we should not build material. So we should not build devices if we want to avoid the impact, because most of the most of the impact is on on manufacturing. And as I mentioned, f as far as we know, five, the five other persons are on the end of life, as far as we know, because it's mostly done illegally on the most dirtiest place, and we have no real clue, because no one is really interested on, on what happened there. And as the situation is a bit tricky, um, if we took if we take a server in Poland, things will change. Because, um, so Switzerland has a clean energy mix, Poland has not. Poland uses a lot of coal, and I could have taken like US or China or Congo, a lot of other countries. And in this case, and al also a server run 24-7. Uh, so it will consume far more electricity. So we got, on, the, on, the, on this case of server in, in Poland, we got the tricky case where things are the opposite. They are the opposite. We have only 15% on, on manufacturing. A lot and a big bunch of impact within the data center when we consume the electricity. And we always have those almost 5% in the end that are on the unknown, um, unknown end of life. This is just to show you why I didn't like the, the um, carbon footprint assessment where we just look at one single piece. Things are not easy. The case of IT is highly technical, and I believe we need all the IT people to understand how it's work, because we will need to reduce the footprint of IT, and we'll need all of us IT guys to reduce this footprint and, and keep it um, under control. And for those that might not believe that we have uh, few recycling, this is a table from the UN. So this is like table, the, the periodic table of elements. All the ones that have colors are used in IT. The ones that are in blue are a kind of classic, typical um, metals that we recycle with more than 50%. percent 
all the reds are those that we recycle with less than 1%. Just let me repeat it, less than 1%. So basically nothing at all. And this illustrates pretty well uh, how rec rec recycling works uh, in IT. It doesn't. There is no recycling. We cannot believe that we will close the loop. At least for now, we, we cannot. We have like brilliant minds in, ET, in, in ETH or EPFL to try to improve the situation, but for now it is not. A and I will go with the final example, which is my favorite one actually, um, which is the cloud, because everyone knows that the cloud is virtual, you have no footprint, everything is light, everything is marvelous, you can increase it whenever you want, uh, everything is green, Google is even carbon negative, so nothing to care about it. And there is so much marketing that when you think about it, uh, or an, an IT guy think about it, you will probably think about this. So I got my smartphone, my device, connected to the network, and then somewhere in the cloud I should have servers. So this is for those that know a bit of it. Uh, if you take any random guy in the street, uh, the cloud might be the phone or whatever, something else, anywhere that they don't know exactly what is, or uh, connected to the internet, you never know, so much marketing that in the end, uh, the key message, it, it, it is virtual. Yet when I look to the cloud, the first picture I have is this one, because this is all the extraction we need, all the petroleum, all the coal, the gas that we need to run those machines, because a lot of them are in America, a lot of them are in China, with, our, with, our, with far from green uh, electricity mix, then we have those data center. I'm actually very proud that I found a, a, a picture of data center that is not blue. This one is in real, real uh, light. And uh, we have a bit of network, because this is how it ne our network looks like. Large ships that pose uh, cables across the ocean, far from being green again. And um, a nice hand, which is always an happy hand for any laptop or server that you have. Um, we don't know, actually, probably illegally exported. it. A key statistics, last time that Interpol looked at the situation, almost three quarters of the laptops in Europe were illegally exported. So three out of four basically disappeared, uh, and we don't know where they end up after a few jump into the, into the, the Europe. Well, after such a bad uh, situation, <laughs> The question is, can we fix and inc can we make converge eco ecological and digital transition? I believe we can. There is key points uh, to look at that are related to the, the footprint of IT if we want to get the best. So if we want to reduce the footprint of mobility, if we want to get to reduce the footprint of whatever industries, we will need digital, we will need to, we will need to develop it and use it, and we must do it with care, we must do it caring of the footprint of IT. Um, and for this, I will just go through um, a bit of equipment, of, of elements that are important at corporate or um, at personal levels. The first one is reducing the equipment ratio. So reduce the amount of equipment we use. To just remind, we are in Switzerland, we have a nice electricity mix, we have a lot, way too much devices, so the footprint is in manufacturing. We just need to buy less stuff. This is the, the key point, Let, buy less equipment uh, in IT, replace, have lower replacement rate for laptops, for servers. If you look at the, at the nice picture of Apple, I, I remind that the last one for the iPhone was, they just changed the color. The previous one was green, the following one was purple. Uh, maybe they will, they will find a, a, a yellow one. I mean, we don't need all those equipments. We just need to think about how we will use it and keep them and make them last uh, as long as possible. And to make them last as long as possible, we need to care about reparability. Reparability may be very easy for a laptop when you replace the battery. Same for a smartphone. If you're operating in data centers or servers or you have whatever uh, equipment, same. Can I repair it? Can I fix it quickly? Efficiently, though the manufacturer provide me information, first it will save CO2, it will save water, but it will also save a lot of money. So we have a very interesting uh, interest here. And there, are, there is actually 
interesting results on how Samsung stopped to make um, reparable, reparable um, smartphones when the, the sales started to uh, reach the, the ceiling. Another element that might be interesting is to switch off. Um, switch off when we have servers that we operate a lot of time, switch off uh, network equipment when we don't use them, and um, reduce the, the usage of cloud and the usage of mobile network whenever we might use um, the fixed line network. We just conducted with Resilio a study in France with the four most important operators, telecom operators, so Orange, Free, and uh, Brick Telecom, and I miss one. Um, and in France, we have a 1 to 10 ratio, approximately, between one byte on fixed network and one, one byte over the mobile network in terms of CO2. So there is an important gap between the two because bytes on the fixed network need way less energy. So whenever you can use the fixed network, please do it. And last but not least, um, have bringing back the equipment. So this is a tricky one, because I've mentioned how they all go um, illegally. Actually, they don't all go um, to, the, to illegal exports. And whenever we drop um, a smartphone, a device, whatever, they often work. So we can start, and we need to start and put uh, mobiles to put devices in this machine of refurbishment, second-hand markets. So we definitely need to bring back the phones on the market and not um, in your house in the in the spare um, spare place where you you don't you all have them in case the new one broke, um, the new one will broke for sure, and you will not use the spare one because you will buy a new uh, another one. So just take the spare. And, and bring them bring them back on the um, and refurbishment market. High efficiency, very low effort. Keep your phones two years more, not two years, but two years more. This is very important. This is this is the first thing you can do from tomorrow morning. Um, really start to to increase the lifetime of, of your um, equipment. Use one that you will be able to repair that will have longer uh, lifetime for this. For the smartphone, I always use the example of Fairphone that provides smartphone that last that are, have a uh, warranty for five years. They can like last actually more than eight. Um, so it is possible. It is not not more expensive than any Apple or Samsung one. Very efficient. And when you can switch off, you switch off. Something that is very inefficient, um, at least in the case of Switzerland, uh, delete of your emails. It will take times. It will take you time, and will not change anything. Um, actually, it might save something on your mental health or pressure, feeling of pressure. This is okay, but from an environmental standpoint, it have no no sense. Uh, same for all the tips of changing the brothers or using um, another one to save a bit of electricity. We're in Switzerland; electricity is nice, so we have one thing to do: buy less stuff. And there is a second element, which is definitely linked to the first one. The second one is for all of you that produce software. So if you produce software, you know the chain. First, you have a business need. Uh, then you have a software. You have the data. Then uh, the servers is not large enough. So you will increase it. You will replace the phone. You will replace the laptop because you need a second screen. And in the end, you increase uh, the environmental impact. So let's bring this chain again and try to critique and review the business needs so we can have light softwares that use less resources and we replace and buy less stuff. So this is something that is very interesting when we produce uh, softwares, when we produce uh, um, digital services is to eco-design them, look at the needs, do only interesting and efficient stuff with as few resources as possible because in the end, it will reduce the amount of IT resources we need. So it will, we will produce less stuff, and it will cost uh, less. And one key example of, of a company that actually understood what is uh, digital sobriety, do you remind of them? 
they actually disappeared because they, they had a very efficient competitor in eco design, whose name is Google, that makes something very efficient, uh, way lighter, way more efficient, way more easy to, to use. So key message when you want to eco design, reduce the amount of stuff you put on the screen, only the essential part as light as possible. And this um, is defined as a, comp a, f a set of, of elements whose name is, is low tech or slow tech or frugal innovation. You can frame it the way you want. Use the less sophistication, the less IT you can to solve the business needs. I will again repeat what I've said all this presentation log. If we want to use uh, IT efficiently, if we want IT to be part of the solution and not part of the problem, if we actually want IT to save the world, we need to use less, less of it. Uh, we need to use it efficiently. Last slide for me. What's next? What can you do? You have probably plenty of, of elements. Just be critical on what you do. If we want IT to be sustainable, because I'm convinced that apart from uh, Microsoft bullshit, IT can really be a solution to reduce our footprint that we definitely need to reduce right now. We don't have like 20 more years. We need to start right now. Um, if we want it to be sustainable, if we want to reduce the impact, we need to keep the impact under control and think about it. And we can start right now. Thank you. We have a little gift for you Thank from you. Bern. And now we have a look at our question screen. The first question. If you bring back an old device to a store in Switzerland, is it also going to be burnt in Africa? It's complicated to answer. Um, I've made a bit of research on it, and I can tell you it is impossible to answer. Um, and I'm pretty angry against the EU, because uh, in the EU you have um, a regulation on how you give the statistics of e-waste, and, and the system is broken in such a way you cannot see where those the wastes go. So you see who exports inside the EU, who export outside the EU. You, you see a bit of it, but you don't understand where the flows go. So something interesting is that 90 or 95% or of the equipment deposited in Switzerland that will be waste, so the one that will not be reused, which are a small fraction of what we, you put back in the store, so that those that will not be reused will go in the EU. And then from there, they will go probably on another country in the EU, will then end up in a recycling factory or uh, go through uh, Milano or Amsterdam to Africa. This is impossible to answer right now, unfortunately. But if you have equipment, bring them back because most of them can be reused. Most of them will be reused. And uh, fortunately, with the increase of amounts, we have increase of research and economic incentives to have uh, recycling in Europe. The next question is, in Japan, there is the concept of urban mines. Are they doing better than Europe? Well, <laughs> Europe is having a huge problem right now. Um, China doesn't want to export for free any anymore. So China started to understand that critical materials that are used for motors, so all electric vehicles, for um, all the wind turbine, turbines or most of the uh, IT equipment, they are rare. So now we have a problem. We were dependent only in China, a bit of Australia and, and US. They are starting to close. They're starting to tell us, you will not, uh, you will not give a ticket for free right now. So we've started with mine, typical one mines. Uh, the EU started to discuss with uh, the Spanish people, uh, the, the Swedish people, and guess what? They don't want to actually have a mine in front of their house, um, w which can be understood. So we have this kind of urban mine, but we need to understand for now it does not work. For now it, it stayed to be, it stayed uh, an ID, so urban mine for those that don't know, mainly you will take stuff where it is already, so it can be uh, previous landfilling sites, or it can be um, former industrial sites where you will grab the former waste and extract uh, materials. This in Europe is not in place for now. 
and we have incentive to do so because we no longer have all the solutions. Next question. 15 devices per person in Switzerland. You think the actual problem is that, as an example, Apple brings out too many new devices. What's the solution? Um, I don't know what's the exact solution. I guess it's not easy, as I would not be here and I would not work uh, with a, a lot of people on this topic. I hope that the solution, part of the solution is to make better software that we don't need to replace. I guess part of it will be to reduce advertising on the, um, on the smartphones and put in place what the EU is starting to do, um, put in place regulation for repairing the, repairing the smartphones. But here the battle is far from being uh, win. Just a, a small example, the EU just put it in force, an eco-design policy for all the smartphones, except the one you can um, split in two parts or you can uh, because Nokia explained this was all just f f um, uh, forget it phones, old ones, and guess ones uh, to avoid the eco design manufacturer are building new ones. So they try to go around the rules. It's not easy to solve, and I guess we need to have like both of them something on the manufacturing side and something on the software because we mainly change the device because they are too slow. We have another question. What should actually be the average of devices per person, ideal? Ideal. Um, I don't know if zero is, the, is <laughs> the, the, the best one from an environmental standpoint. Um, I would say that when you have more than two on you that you carry every day, it's too much. So two can, can be fast. Uh, I know a lot of people that have, at the same time, the watch, two phones, one personal, one private, one uh, professional, plus the laptop. And this is only what you carry with you, because there is all the rest uh, that is a bit everywhere. So, yeah, I, I would say we should, we should really reduce it. And the best is the very minimum you can support. And the last question we have. Do you think that devices are built bad, not a long life duration on purpose, so we spend more money? Yes, I'm convinced of it. Um, it's very hard to demonstrate, uh, but there is key facts. At the moment, the sales, so the sales of Samsung increase dramatically, and at the moment they reach a plateau, so they, they reach kind of a level. Up to, now, up, up to this moment, you can remove the battery and replace the battery of, of um, the, the phones of Samsung. From this moment in time, they started, they stopped to do it. So you, you were no longer able to change the battery, while we know that on a smartphone, the battery is the first component to die. I'm not convinced that it happened by, by chance. I really believe that they have Brian minds that have understood that if they want to increase the sale, they just need to reduce the duration of the the smartphone and uh, soldering the battery is a nice move in this direction. So I, I really convinced that they do it on purpose. Thank you very much for the presentation. Amael Baroué.